Hi, welcome to Box on the Box Rock and Celluloid, Bob Brack for short, I'm Edward Box. So today I'm going to be looking at my top 10 comedy films. I'm not a massive comedy fan, but when I look down sort of potential entries, I realise, you know, there's a lot of comedies like. I think the difference with a comedy is it doesn't have uh, the sort of aesthetic uh, element to it that, uh, you know, a science fiction or, you know, a thriller or something like that may may have. You know, it is kind of plonk the camera in place uh, and, you know, let the comedy happen on the screen. Uh, I think it's probably very difficult to direct in that respect. It's not like comedy films necessarily have, like, uh, no, it's great production designer or they might have certainly cinematography, don't have an arty sort of cinematography on comedy films because uh, unless it's trying to pastiche something... Um, it uh, you know it just needs a kind of flat uh, sort of look so to speak because it's the the comedy we're watching and that may be visual or maybe verbal my, my sort of thing with comedies is is how much am I laughing you know if I'm laughing all the time well it's a good comedy if I'm not laughing uh, uh, at all it's not if I'm sort of laughing half the time well it's okay it really um, you know d depends in that respect um, some of the, the things I considered when I was going down this, uh, you know, was like, I love, love the first Bill and Ted, it's really funny. Legally Blonde, I've got a soft spot for, love Bender's Snap, Weird Science is a teen comedy I've always found funny. Uh, Man, the Man With Two Brains, uh, Steve Martin, that was one I loved uh, when I was younger, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Um, you know, there's some stuff uh, with him. Uh, a lot of people love playing strains of automobiles, um, which would, would have made a cut, obviously, the naked gun. Uh, meet the Parents, I think Meet the Fockers is funny as well. I think Meet the Parents is a very funny film. Uh, um, and it's great, the contrast between Ben Stiller and, and Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro is hilarious, in it? And Elf, very funny, but I count that more as a Christmas film. So, you know, if you're picking your top ten Christmas films, that would be very high up. The Nutty Professor, I can't stand Jerry Lewis really, uh, but The Nutty Professor is really good. I love that as a kid. Um, his performance is really, really funny. Uh, it's really well directed. Stella Stevens is really good. Um, it's just a great riff on Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I've always, always had a soft spot for sitcoms that have been turned into films. A lot of the time these are rubbish, but a couple I've always loved is the film version of Likely Lads. Um, I think that's a really good transference of what happened, whatever happened to the likely lads on the big screen. Uh, the other one is <laughs> bizarre, his holiday on the buses. Never been bothered about on the buses or mutiny on the buses film as much. But I loved holiday on the buses as a kid. I think it's because they go to the holiday camp and that's something I never did as a kid. And it just kind of fascinated me. Um, I just think it's really funny. Um, there was something kind of exciting and, uh, you know, oh, great, they've gone on holiday. Um... Uh, a carry on, I would have picked a carry on film, but I've already done my top 10 carry on films, and they're kind of a separate thing. Uh, two films I loved when I was younger, I still like them. Uh, well, certainly, when I somehow like it, Hot is a classic. Um, it's got brilliant comedic performances by actors who can do comedy but can also do drama. Um, you know, I mean, typically Marilyn Lowe's known as a comedian, but she did do drama in The Misfits, Bus Stop. Tony Curtis obviously had an Oscar nomination for the uh, the Defiant Ones. He was in dramas. He's absolutely on the money in this. And obviously Jack Lemmon was known for comedy, but he did amazing dramatic performances as well. Brilliantly directed, brilliantly cast. Uh, you know, a real high point uh, of Hollywood cinema. Uh, a film I loved when I was younger is It's a Mad Mad World. I've not seen it for years. Uh, whenever I've seen clips, I'm like, I probably won't like this as much now. Um... But when I was younger, that was an epic, you know, it was an epic madcap comedy, road race comedy. They actually almost remade it. I forget, with Rat Race, wasn't it? That was a take on it. It's a mad world. It spawned things like Monte Carlo or Bust, The Great Race, um, things like that. But um, I think, uh, you know, I've never gone back to it. Uh, the last time I saw it properly was probably over 30 years ago or more. Um, but I kind of almost want to just keep that memory of loving it as a kid, you know. Um, it is a great bit, the end's great. Um, okay, so my top ten comedy films of all time. Uh, you know, this is what it is at the moment. But the uh, first one I'm going to go for is the most uh, one of the most modern ones in the list. Um, I think it's brilliant. I regularly watch this 
every few years my wife loves it and it's Mean Girls uh, written by Tina Fey um, you know forget it directs it um, it's really obviously Lindsay Lohan uh, it's a star making role really one of them uh, shame you know way things went from her for her but um, just really funny uh, um, but with something to say about teen dynamics and it, it already looks a bit sort of not antiquated, but it's in an era before, you know, smartphones and things like that. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, God knows what uh, the musical version's like. I'm not going to bother with that. Um, but, um, yeah, this is a great, great teen comedy. It's really funny. Love it. Next one up, uh, I was uh, humming and hawing, um between this and, of course, Life of Brian. Uh, Life of Brian is probably the better film from a, uh, you know, sort of a something to say point of view. But I've just always loved the utter silliness of uh, the Holy Grail, the Knights of St. Knee, um, you know, a shrubbery, he gets his arms cut off and that, the bit with the bunnies. It's just uh, Python at the stupidest best, so Holy Grail would be one of my favourites. Next one up, again, I mentioned The Naked Gun before. Uh, I like Top Secret as well. Um, but the airplane uh, would be a classic choice. Um, you know, the Zucker Brothers just uh, hit on a style, and you know, you get shit like Scary Movie and so on. There's been loads of stuff, but it's such a great parody disaster film. It's actually quite like Airplane to the, the fucking there, uh, William Shatner bit's brilliant. But this is, again, this is just gag. Gag heavy, it just keeps you laughing. It's got visual gags, it's got verbal gags. Um, uh, but the thing is, it's clearly got um, a love for the disaster film and love for the straight laced performances and the, the brilliant casting uh, of Leslie Nielsen, you know, uh, spotted probably in the Poseidon Adventure. Um, brilliant. Next one I'm going to go for is uh, I think what's great about this film is this is where, like, you know, the kind of um, artistic element comes in in comedy um, with the photography and the production design and so on. Uh, and it's young Frankenstein, Mel Brooks. Um, uh, just a brilliant parody pastiche of, of uh, the Bride of Frankenstein, really. If you've seen the original from 1931 Frankenstein, um, uh, it's uh, obviously that's what it's, uh, you know, a parody of. But um, pastiche, but uh, the Bride of Frankenstein is actually quite funny, quite camp. And like Brooks has recognised that, I think. The cast brilliant, Gene Wilder's brilliant, Terry Garr, Madeline Kahn. Uh, but of course, Peter Boyle's just genius as the monster. The putting on the rich bit's amazing, and <laughs> a bit where he's got the butterflies. But I think what really, really hits the mark with this is is like how like all that effort's gone into perfectly capturing uh, that universal horror look. I should just say on the, the subject of sort of artistic comedy, you know, there's no Woody Allen in here. I, I've never really got on board with Woody Allen, uh, you know, aside from controversies. Um, but a film like Manhattan's, like, superbly shot by Gordon Willis. Um, Annie Hall's, you know, funny, he's got some funny scenes. But in, in reality, the, the Woody Allen film I've always enjoyed the most is his first one, Take the Money and Run, which is daft. And it's got daft sight gags. Uh, and his, uh, you know, his parents are disguised as, um, you know, the Mark, Groucho Marx. I've always, you know, I've always liked the stupidity of that. I guess I do like my comedy's a bit stupid, which brings me to my next choice, Shaun of the Dead. Hot Fuzz would be uh, a possible choice as well. Um, Hot Fuzz is quite long, uh, so Shaun of the Dead's just perfect. Um, perfect, like, uh, you know, direction, perfect comedy performances from the three principal leads. Um, it's got a great, you know, the gags about the Winchester. Um, nice gag, you know, reference to Minder there. Um, uh, you know, it's a kind of sh shame that thing when people are funny and they kind of stop being funny. Simon Pegg's an example of that, you know, Simon Pegg's really funny in this and Hot Fuzz. He plays a kind of straight guy and that. He does funny things and he's kind of got a Hollywood, obviously he's had a drink problem. So, you know, if you're dealing with that, it kind of makes you more serious and, you know, now he's, he's, he's got a comedy bypass. Like John Cleese in that respect, John Cleese just, you know, the last funny thing he did was a fish called One Wonder. And that's where he kind of plays the straight role. Just an observation. Edgar Wright, a brilliant director, quite like to do a bomb film. 
Uh, my next choice is a real modern classic, this. Um, and it's a film, again, whenever you watch it or it's on, you just have to watch it. You know, you just have to watch those bits and you're just always laughing and it's bridesmaids. What I like about this film is it's female focused. There's no big song and dance about that. It's just a really funny film. Uh, Prince, and it's focused on female relationships, female characters. Um, Kristen Wiig is absolutely brilliant in this role. She should have an Oscar nomination for this. I think Melissa McCarthy got one, who's also brilliant. Um, uh, Rose Byrne's brilliant. My, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot her name. Apologies, uh, the, the best character, the lady who plays the best mate. Um, uh, John Hamm's great, uh, Chris O'Dowd. Um, Ma Rudolph, sorry. Um, yeah, it's uh, quite serious as well because, you know, she's kind of stuck in that film where she's drinking. So it's a kind of little look at like, having a, a bad relationship with alcohol. Another film that w I would choose as a really funny comedy as well is Young Adult. Um, another modern one which looks at this as well. Brilliant performance from Charlize Theron in that, if you haven't seen that. But uh, Kristen Wiig, I don't know what happened to her. Like, there's, there's a couple other things I've seen where she's really funny. But it's like, you know, this was like a kind of star-making role with potential. Uh, and she could have got, like, her own projects, I guess. And But it just didn't seem to happen. Um, you know, I also think she's, like, quite hot in this as well. I've got this thing about her, like, it's kind of dishevelled perfectly. Um, but anyway... Um, yeah, Bridesmaids, just a, again, it's just a consistently funny film, but with a kind of seriousness to it, and that's a really hard balance. Um, my next choice is just a completely stupid film. There's quite a few of these by this actor. Um, when uh, his other ones are funny, I really like them. A lot of people have a problem with him. Uh, but this film, for the first second I saw it, I just fucking uh, love it. It's Step Brothers. Um, uh, so obviously uh, Will Ferrell, John C. Riley, brilliant performances as well by Richard Lewis, um, not Richard Lewis, Richard, you know, forgot his second name, sorry, um, and um, Mary Steenberg, um, just uh, hilarious bits in this, just, you know, the men, men child, I think at the heart of this is what's funny about this is the idea that you, your kid is going to stay at home and live with you for an eternity, that's a very real Listic thing in today's modern society with people, uh, you know, not um, uh, house prices being expensive, rent being expensive, people are living longer with their parents, and the generation gap's not the same now. You know, parents and kids like the same music, so people down the thing where they can't wait to get away from their parents with respect, and parent, people go on holiday with their, their, their parents when they're a lot older, you know, I stopped going on, on holiday with my parents in like 1985 was the last time I went, I was like 14. Um, so it, it's, again, it's got like a, an issue there, but I just love things in this one, like the Catalina wine mixer, the sweet child of mine bit, the bit where he rubs his balls on the cymbals, it's just so immature. I like Blades of Glory, the other guys is funny, um, you know, there's quite a few of uh, uh, Will Ferrell and McKay things. Obviously, Alan McKay went on to do uh, the big short, uh, the um, uh, Vice, the 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 Cheney film, uh, and the um, uh, the thing on Netflix about the environmental catastrophe. What What's interesting, he still kind of shoots things in that kind of flat comedy uh, way. Uh, in a sense, you know, it's not art, it's not art, camera angles or flourishes, directorial flourishes. Um, so that kind of his directorial style, it, for his uh, more serious stuff, has still got that, um, uh, you know, style that he's developed in the feral era. Um, so yeah, love that. My next choice is, uh, I had to pick a Stan and Ollie. Um, I was going to go way out west, which is great, but probably the best long film, it's only like 68 minutes of his Sons of the Desert. What's great about this is Stan and Ollie, there's, there's always several recurring themes in Stan and Ollie. One is generally the, the Dan and Ollie, it's the depression and the skint. And the other one is they're married, they're reasonably successful, but the hen-pecked husbands, and then they, 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 they conspire to get away from their wives. Um, uh, which may not be very modern, but I don't care. But on Sons of the Desert, uh, there's a brilliant bit that go away for their, um, you know, um, uh, weekend away with the lads, this uh, society they're, they're members of. 
um, uh, and um, you know they come up with some excuse and obviously the, the, the hook at the end is, is uh, they're at the cinema and uh, there they are on screen I think and the wife spot them absolutely brilliant uh, Stan Ollie probably my favourite some of my favourite comedy of all time uh, my next choice is uh, A Shot in the Dark so the Pink Panther films the first Pink Panther's a lot of fun but Clouseau's not in it a lot and when they brought it back with the return of the Pink Panther, that's actually very funny, Christopher Plummer. Now you got Strikes Again and Revenge of the Pink Panther, which kind of, you know, um, uh, diminishing returns, but still some amazing uh, sellers moments. After that, obviously, they tried to reboot Steve Martin and did those awful, um, you know, things without takes. And then there's the Alan Arkin Inspector Clouseau from 1968, which I've never seen, it's never on TV. But anyway, a shot in the dark is interesting because he's not got any reference to the Pink Panther. Um, it was a, a popular film in the day. Actually, I think it actually grossed more than the Pink Panther. Certainly, it was close. Um, but uh, you know, so many people forget the, uh, about it in the Pink Panther series because really, it's a Clouseau film. It's got a great credit sequence, great theme tune um, by Mancini. You got a great kind of opening tracking shot. So that, again, that's something like. Um, Blake Edwards actually shows a bit of director flourish there um, with that opening sequence, you know, in the house. Uh, Sellers is amazing, but there's a bit of the nudist camp. Uh, Elka Summer's great. George Sanders is brilliant. Lom's incendiary in this. You know, uh, later on, it gold goes a bit daft with Herman, uh, Herbert Lom. But in this, he's just kind of losing the plot, getting more exasperated, and he tries to assassinate him. Uh, yeah, Sellers was a genius. Um, uh, again, he's one of those actors where his talent could be wasted on things because the, the script wasn't there, or the laugh quote wasn't there. Um, uh, so he ended up doing a lot of uh, a lot of you know, there's a lot of Peter Sellers films that you've probably never heard of. You know, you're going to know his filmography, um, but this kind of kept him uh, his, his profile, so to speak. But a shot in the dark, great. So my number one choice. Um, I would have uh, included this in my rock films, but it's a rockumentary. I deliberately kept it. For this, and obviously Spinal Tap's easily my favourite comedy of all time. I'm a musician. I relate to a lot of the things on it. Um, I never tire of watching it. I'm always quoting it. I'm be out with my mates, and we'll be just, just we'll go in a Spinal Tap. We'll start doing Heartbreak Hotel or something. You're a saucy one, Jack. Um, you know, uh, puppet show. There's just endless things in this. The Enorma Dome. I mean, you could just go on and on with this. It's the thing with this film is it's. Again, consistently funny. Mime is money. Uh, Bobby Flatman, uh, you know, uh, Polymer Records, uh, Sir Dennis, you know, it just, Dennis Eaton Hogg, you could just go on. Liam, uh, endless gags, uh, visual gags, um, you know, it's, it's, it's subtle uh, in, in ways that people don't realise, I think. Um, so that is my number one choice. That's my top 10 comedy films. Uh, so thanks for checking out and I'll see you again soon. Thanks.